Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple high-low game for PC and mobile in Unity and welcome to episode 8. In this tutorial we're going to create a scoring system in the way of a streak, i.e. constantly get it right, goes up, get it wrong, it resets. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, a simple score. Like I said, if we get it right, we add one. If we get it wrong, we reset. We're going to need a script which is going to keep track of our score and update our screen whenever we change it. So let's right click, create, C sharp script. We'll call this global score. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Not sure why it keeps opening other scripts up. I wish you'd stop doing that. Yeah, so we need to open up that global score script. And obviously it's going to be completely blank. We're going to deal with UI elements in this. So, uh, I think we've done it before, have we? No, I don't think we have. So we're going to add at the top of this script a namespace which allows us to change elements of the UI on our screen. In this case, it's going to be the text itself. So we're going to have a text box on our screen that basically says either one, two, three, four, whatever for our score. But in order to do that, beneath using Unity Engine, we need to type using Unity Engine dot UI semicolon. Reason being is because we need to be able to interact with UI elements in this script. So let's add in our variables. The first variable we're going to add in is going to be an integer, which is going to be the score or the streak, depending on whatever you want to call it. So let's have public static int for integer, not indexer, why has it done that? Int, and let's call this current score, semicolon. And the reason it's static is because other scripts are going to interact with this one to tell this script what the score actually is. Now we can get rid of the start method and the annotations. We do not need them. And essentially what we do need to do is say in void update, we need to check what our score is and update it on our screen. But in order to do that, we actually need to have something on our screen which contains the score. So let's head back into Unity, doesn't matter whether you save the script or not at this point, and let's add in something at the top. So I'm going to go to Game Object, I'm going to go to UI, and let's have um, let's have a panel to start with. And you can see it does cover the entire screen, but let's adjust this now. So we can use our Rec tool, and we can shift this around up here, and just make it appear a bit kind of tidier at the top. And obviously you can take a little bit more time to do this than what I do. And inside this panel, let's have uh, the text that says our current streak. So right click, let's go to UI, go to text. Let's have this text say streak. But actually now I think about it, let's actually make sure this panel is at the top. So we need it um there so it's going to be that so it's going to be top stretched there we go so our streak i might have that in capital letters actually streak colon zero let's make this a little bigger um so let's have font size let's say 24 and let's have it this side so we've aligned it there so I'm going to put that round about there, I think. And yeah, that should do. So hopefully our streak will increase, you know, as we want to. So let's have that as zero. And again, I'm just doing this really quickly. You can go a little bit more in depth with how your UI looks. These are just the mechanics that you need to actually get this working. Let's rename this text to have streak score. And this is going to be the text box that we update within the global score. So let's go back into global score. And we can say here, if we add in the variable, public game object. And this can be 
score display semicolon. So score display is going to be that object. So we need to access the components inside score display, which is known as the text. And there's a subcomponent also called text. And that's where we typed streak colon zero. So we can use that to our advantage. So we can say score display dot get component and in spiky brackets text with a capital T and then open close bracket. At this point, we need to make sure that we are getting the correct subcomponent. So like I say, we on that one, we've gone to get component. So we're getting one of these. We've told it we're getting this component and the subcomponent that we need to edit is going also to be called text, but it's still a capital T here, but we don't use that capital T. So when dealing with that subcomponent, just keep in mind the main component is capitalized. This subcomponent to text isn't. So we need to go back to our script and say dot text with a lowercase t. Now we need to tell it what the text actually is. So in this case, we say it's equal to, and then we have the quotes and we'll say streak, colon, space, and then another quote. We don't put any numbers here. The reason why is because we can use that current score integer to do that for us. So if we say plus current score semicolon and save, that script will now update our score whenever it changes. So if we head back into Unity and let's say, for example, we changed our streak score text. Let's just put gibberish there. When we press play, we haven't applied the script, it will still say whatever. But the clever thing about this script when we actually apply it is it will manipulate anything in there. So you can see I've changed that. The script doesn't exist in the scene, so it's obviously not going to do anything. However, if we put global score onto our settings up here and then tell it which one. So what, actually what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to close up some of these components. So let's press them arrows to close them up because we don't need those right now. Uh, let's add our score display, which is our streak score over there. So now this script knows that this needs to be changed. So even though when we press play last time, it still says F -f 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 -f. if we change now, it is going to say streak zero. So that means that this script is now in complete control of our score. So once again, we can use that to our advantage. If we go into card control, and if we get it correct, which we have right here, we can now change this. So under correct text active true, let's now put global score dot current score plus equals one. And then we can use that same line of code further down here. And once again, because we've got it correct, we add one. So the question is, what do we do if we get it wrong? Well, when the incorrect text is displayed, let's go back here. And instead of global score dot current score plus equals one, we say equals zero. So we've reset our score nice and easily right there. And save. Head back into Unity. And let's press play. And that should change to our streak. So deal card, I think it's going to be lower. It is, so that's changed to one. So let's see if we can get this up to two now. So high. Oh, it's going to reset as we saw there. I at least wanted to get it to two. So that's correct. I'm thinking maybe we should speed this up a little bit once we've got our sound effects and everything in and our animations and stuff, because it is a little bit slow at the moment. Low? Ooh, wrong again. And, oh gosh. So our streak didn't even increase at all there. So you can see that every possible scenario is covered for right now. It's doing quite well. Uh, so low, and that should go to two. Great. So everything looks like it is working as intended now. So the reason this is quite long is because my intent is to add in 
uh, maybe a high score and save a high score. So when you exit the application and come back onto it, it's saved your high streak. Uh, what I might do is change this. I'm not convinced about how it looks. So I'm going to change that to black. Maybe change the alpha a little more and change the text to white. Maybe italic? Who knows? Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Again, I think it's all down to you and how you want to customize your game, really. So that looks okay. We'll stick with that. Cool. So next tutorial, um, I, I think I do want to bring in this sound effects music because it's dull and boring right now, isn't it? There's no sound. So I want to add in sound effects uh, for dealing cards, getting it correct, getting it incorrect, which is going to require a little bit more programming. And let's have some background music as well. I think we'll add that in. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching, guys.